Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is a cute little tutorial for all the cat lovers out there. I'm going to show you how to make a little catnip mouse. And this is inspired by catnip toys that I've bought for my cat. This is a really ingenious cat toy because it has a little pocket that you can fill up with catnip, then empty out the catnip when it gets less potent and fill it up again. After some testing, I figured out a way to make this really simple to sew. You can find the template for this little mouse over on my blog, and I'll put a link to that down in the show notes. So all you need to make this catnip toy are some fabric scraps. I just use kind of a medium weight cotton fabric, some Velcro. I'm using five eighths of an inch sew on Velcro. You could probably also use adhesive Velcro if you want. And then you'll just need thread and a hand sewing needle to do the finishing. And then after it's all done, make sure to get some catnip to fill up your toy. Let's get started. Let's start by making our little catnip pouch. I'm using a one quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to stitch from one edge down part way around the curve. And my fabric is right sides together. As you sew around the curve, you might need to just lift your presser foot and pivot your fabric a little bit because it's such a tight curve, it's hard to get the feed dogs to really evenly feed it. So you might have to do it a little bit manually. That's totally normal. Um, you could alternately use a shorter stitch length and that would go around the curve a little easier. I'm gonna do a little back stitch. And then I'm going to take this over to my pressing station. All right, so with our little catnip pocket, we just wanna gently press open the seam allowance and you could even just finger press it a little bit. So the reason I'm just stitching it a little bit right now is because it'll be easier to attach our Velcro if we attach our Velcro now and before we have it already all stitched together in a little pocket because it's so tiny. So I'm kind of making an extra step to get the Velcro on, but this is gonna be the cleanest finish and the easiest to sew. Next, we wanna fold this straight edge to the wrong side about 5 eighths of an inch and just give that a good press. Okay, so here's the little seam that we stitched, pressed open, and then our straight edge is pressed to the wrong side, 5 eighths of an inch. This is the right side of the pocket, and you wanna take your Velcro that you cut out using the template and just pin a piece of Velcro to the top edge of each right side, and make sure you leave at least a quarter of an inch along this raw edge. Okay, I have my little pocket and I'm ready to stitch on my Velcro. This is the right side of my pocket, the folded edge and that seam we just stitched is on the inside. And I wanna make sure that I have at least a one quarter inch gap at the edge. I'm just gonna top stitch along each edge and I have my Velcro right against that folded edge. Okay, and now I will stitch the other side of the Velcro down and make sure you know you're using the two opposing kinds of Velcro. Okay, now that I have my Velcro sewn onto the right side, I'm going to fold it right sides together and your Velcro should be sticking together if it's sewn on correctly. And now I'm going to finish stitching around this curve with a one quarter inch seam allowance. All right, our little catnip pouch is all done. 
And now we can start to stitch the exterior of our mouse. So I'm gonna stitch all around this big curved edge and then down to where I put the pin, which is where the dot is on the template. Again, I'm using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, then I, I'm gonna do a little back stitch. Okay, now let's take this over to the pressing station. Here I have my little mouse exterior and I'm just going to use my pinking shears to trim up our seam allowance. Um, if you don't have pinking shears, you can also trim it with your scissors and then clip a little bit into the seam allowance to help it press evenly. So try to finger press this open if you can. If you can't, no big deal. We're gonna turn this right side out and then I'm gonna grab my knitting needle and just gently press the little nose of our mousy. Okay, there's our little mouse nose. And you can kind of use your knitting needle to press out that seam. I just have some scraps of batting that were left over from the making of a quilt. And I'm gonna use these to line my little mouse. So I wanna kind of, I'm gonna take this section that's a little bit pointier and stick it down into the nose of my mouse. And your knitting needle can help with this too. Because our pocket's not going to be going into the nose of the mouse. So we'll want just a little bit of padding there. And you don't really need a lot of batting or filler to do this. Um, you could even use like a little sweater knit or something, other leftover fabric. And then I just try to line the edges of my mouse. So just a few layers of batting on each side, just sticking them in there. And it's easier to maneuver your pieces of batting if they're a little bit smaller. You don't want to stuff your mouse too full because we still need to get our pocket in there. So just fold in the raw edge and give it a little press. And then separate your batting so you have a little area for your pocket. I want to take the finished edge of my pocket and line it up with the back of the mouse. And just stick it in here. And the little raw edge of the pocket will be underneath this edge of the mouse. So we don't have any raw edges showing. And then if you want, you can hold this in place with some pins and then you will just hand stitch these together. So you wanna get a needle and thread. My thread is doubled and I have a knot at the end. So you can just start anywhere and do a little slip stitch. So I like to start my knot by just pulling the thread through a loop and then take a little stitch of my pocket and then a little stitch of my mouse and go all the way around until they are sewn together. So after you get your little catnip toy all sewn up, you just open up the Velcro and Fill it with catnip and the cats will come running. Do you like it? You like it, Fox? Mmm. <laughs> I hope that you also like this tutorial. I think it's really fun and my, I know my cat really likes these toys with the catnip. This video is just one in a series of tutorials that I've been doing this holiday season for giftable things that you can make using your fabric scraps. I also just released a new e-course that teaches garment sewers how to use their fabric scraps to make improvisational quilts. It's a really fun, comprehensive course and will really give you a different perspective on using your fabric scraps. I'll link to the intro video here and I'll put a link down in the show notes to learn more and sign up for the course. And if you'd like to support the channel, I'll also put a link to my pattern shop and if you wanna buy me a coffee. Happy sewing. Oh,